Yo! It's actually like 11.04. Uh, it's Thursday. This video is probably going to come out tomorrow. So if you're watching it, it just dropped. It's probably Friday. Um, but I'm at the bins. I just came out. Been in there for like three hours. Uh, I got here at like 7.57 and they were opening the doors early. So I had to run in. I couldn't do like a little intro video. But I've been up since 4 o'clock. Took Vicky to the airport at 5, dropped her off, came home, lounged about, drank some coffee, shipped her stuff, and then headed on over to the bins. Now, my goal is I want to do the bins every day while she's gone. It's going to be five days in a row. So, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday morning. And then do a daily video, which won't come out till the day after. Um, and uh, I'm not going to be trying to like list the stuff that I find. I'm just sourcing. But my goal beyond the going every single day and doing a daily video, my goal is to find at least one item that's gonna make Vicky super jealous, okay? So that's the plan. We're gonna pretend like I didn't just go into the bins uh, for three hours and we're gonna head in now. Just got out, spent about three hours in there, a little longer than I wanted to, only got a little over 12 pounds. Is that a Christmas sweater? Is that the greatest Christmas sweater of all time? I don't know, but it's in a separate bag because it's a little damp and a little smelly, but still worth picking up even though it was gross. So it was super mediocre in there the first two hours. I will say they are they are rotating the bins so crazy fast, it's ridiculous. So you don't really have that much time to be annoyed that stuff isn't good, but I was getting annoyed. And about two hours in, I was super ready to go. Hadn't really found anything super noteworthy, just some kind of basic stuff. Um, just as I was about to throw the towel, because you know the last few times have been amazing. The roots were here. I swear, every day that we had uh, that we brought them in, we were having like do, getting great finds. So today it was just like kind of ugh, mediocre. So I was like, whatever, that's fine. I'm coming for five days. Just as I was about to leave, guys. Just as I was about to leave, I found the one item that not only is going to make Vicky jealous, it is possibly going to make her never want to speak to me again. That's right. It was super exciting. Uh, I cannot wait to show you guys in a little bit. If you saw it in the thumbnail, maybe you know what it is, maybe you don't, um, but I'm excited to show you guys because it's freaking awesome. And then I stuck around for a little while longer and did find a couple more things like my slightly damp, smelly Christmas sweater that's back there, but I couldn't leave it behind. I'm just gonna have to throw it in the wash as soon as I get home. Anyway, let's go and then I will show you the highlights of what I found today. Holy cannoli guys. I was totally going to go home, and then I remembered that right by the bins, we just had the grand opening of a store that's here for the very first time in Las Vegas, and being from Oregon, I'm super excited about it. You'll never guess. Check it out. That's right. It's the gross out. Now, you may not know what I'm talking about, but if you uh, are from the West Coast especially, you definitely know what I'm talking about. We've had the grocery outlet, or as I like to call it, and many people call it, the gross out. Not because it's gross, just because it's fun to say. We've had it in Oregon since I was a kid. Uh, I think originally it started as just like a, a closeout canned foods thing in California and San Francisco. And then in the 70s, um, the first one, independent one, opened in Oregon. And then they became everywhere. We called it Rainbow Canned Goods when I was a kid. I don't think it was ever called Rainbow. It's just that their logo had a rainbow in it. Uh, and it, back then it was mostly just like box goods, canned goods, stuff that um, was closeouts or they changed the labels and stuff like that. But it's changed a lot and it's actually like a franchise. I think they're all like locally owned by families. Um, it's changed a lot. They have a meat department and they have like produce and bread, you know, not stuff that's old, stuff that's fresh. Um, but it's a great place for getting cheap groceries and for resellers. It's an awesome place, especially for health and beauty stuff because they do closeouts and stuff like that. So sometimes you'll find really expensive stuff that you can resell that's been, uh, resale? Resell? That's been discontinued. But I'm excited. Vicky doesn't understand because she's from the East Coast. She didn't know what the gross out was until she came to Oregon and uh, I showed it to her. So she really doesn't care. She doesn't think it's that cool. I think it's awesome. I can't wait to go check it out. And it's right by the bins. So anytime I want to stop in, I can just swing on through. I don't have to go far. So let's go check it out. You got some tasty 4th of July candy. I'll eat that. Seems like it's marked down pretty low. 
I don't know anything about any of these products, but I, mean, I know gummies are like crazy expensive. So ten bucks for a giant one, six bucks for 120 vitamin C. That's actually a really good price. Well, there went an hour of my life. <laughs> I didn't film any more in there because the, they were playing kind of loud music and I didn't want the video to get muted, which will happen sometimes when there is um, unlicensed music in the video. But I had to peruse. I didn't get a ton of stuff. But when we get home, when I get home, when I take you home, I'll do a little uh, little grocery outlet gross out haul for you, huh? You bet you didn't know you were getting a gross out haul. Um, but I will tell you one thing I got. Kombucha. Ginger kombucha. For a dollar ninety nine, where can you get kombucha for two dollars these days? If you're lucky, you get like a two for six dollar deal at the grocery store, but usually it's like three fifty or four. I don't even hardly buy it anymore um, because it's just too expensive. But I love me some kombucha. Vicky hates it. It does. Uh, I'm sorry, it does smell a little bit like garbage, but that's okay. I think it's delicious. Thirty calories for this entire bottle, and I think it tastes quite yummy. Tell me in the comments, how do you feel about kombucha? And if you found it for $1.99, would it blow your mind? Excuse me. I'm trying to do a grocery haul. Let's do a grocery haul. I didn't even know I was going to do this today. Okay, guys. I spent like about $50 at the gross out. Now that sounds kind of a lot, like a lot for what I got. However, first of all, these drinks right here alone account for close to $20 of that. And I would consider these more like luxury items. So good deal on the kombucha. The Spindrift, I've never had this flavor before, this mint and green tea. It was $4.99 for the eight pack. Usually it's at least $5.99 other places. So a good price. Might as well try it out. The Sanzo, I've never had the Sanzo before, but I guess it's really, really expensive normally. And I looked it up and you buy it per can and it's like at least $1.50 a can. So I think I paid about $5 uh, for that six pack, um, which is a very good deal. And we're gonna see if it's any good, but I really do love me some good sparkling water with natural flavors. So we're gonna try that out. So if you take away that, that let's say $20 right there, um, the rest of this was about 30 bucks, which I think was a fantastic deal. First of all, guys, grass-fed ground beef. This was $5, and it's a pound. So $5 for a pound. Their regular beef was definitely way, way cheaper than that, but 5 bucks for a pound of organic grass-fed ground beef, really good. I got this little baby ribeye. It's only an 8-ounce ribeye, and it was like $8. Um, still a really good price. Their regular meat prices were really good. They had New York strip steaks that were only $9.99 a pound, which is uh, much cheaper. I think it's usually at least $12.99 to $14.99 a pound at the grocery store. Free range eggs, which is all I get. These are funky ones, these are blue and brown. Uh, and these are real free range on small family farms, not the free range where it's like they give them an extra six inches of space in their cage. Uh, these were only 350. The normal ones that I buy at the regular grocery store, I pay over $5, which I think is well worth it anyway because I do feel very strongly about free range eggs. Um, and, uh, so 350 to me is a fantastic deal. They had the, the fake free ranges, I call it for like two bucks there. Uh, but I'm happy to pay 350. Uh, dude, this right here, this is a crazy deal. Prosciutto, three ounces. This was only two ninety nine. Generally I pay, I think the cheapest I'm ever able to find at the grocery store is three ninety nine or four ninety nine for three ounces. Prosciutto is pretty expensive, but $2.99 is a really, really good deal. It looks delicious. Um, next up, also a crazy good deal. I like trying out different kinds of cheeses. This little baby right here, it's 5.3 ounces, was $1.99. It is, ooh, mimosa, what? It's got orange and champagne, so I don't know if it's good, but it looks tasty. And I like, you know when you want to try out fancy cheese and you end up spending a bazillion dollars because even a small little bit costs at least five dollars i'll try out some cheese for a dollar 99. got some feta because i want to do some delicious uh, uh frittatas so got my, my feta cheese and i've got my green onions my green onions were only like 79 cents i think at the regular grocery store they're 99. my feta was i think this was like three bucks 
I think the, I spent up a little bit on my King Hawaiian hot dog buns. Um, they were, I think, like $4, but I've got some, uh, I've got some Hebrew Nationals um, that I got at Costco, so I wanted to get some good hot dog buns. Actually, their Hebrew Nationals were only three fifty dollars for a package, which is a crazy deal. At the regular store, it's usually like 5 6 bucks for a package of Hebrew Nationals, and those are the only ones I eat because they are delish. My avocado that needs to ripen up, I think, was like $1.50. And I don't remember what the, what the onion was. So there you go. There you have it. That's my little gross out haul. How exciting is that? What would you guys get? Do you have a gross out near you? Tell me all about it. All right, I'm going to give you a little puppy dog break, a little puppy dog break to cleanse the palate before we head into our bins haul. What's up, Ripley? Why you always interrupting grocery hauls? It's so rude. You dropped your toy. You want me to get that for you? You want that? You want that? Hey, go get it. Oh, nope. You're more interested in what I'm doing? Okay, whatever. So, what are you doing? How rude. How dare you do that to your elder? Grizz doesn't appreciate it. Look, now you're making her cough. Now she's got consumption. Thanks a lot, Ripley. Luna does not approve. Now it has come to this. Let's see how the first day actually went. I probably have like six or seven pieces that I'm not even gonna show you. They're just mid-level items. Um, there aren't anything noteworthy to show, just decent pieces to sell. So I just have a handful of my items. Then I'm going to show you a few pieces that I actually did pick up for Vicky, and you guys can tell me in the comments whether or not I did a good job. So let's get started. First of all, I had talked in our last video about how I was going to start picking up some stuff for uh, turning in for credit at Buffalo Exchange. I didn't find a lot of stuff today. I really only just picked up one shirt. It's a little dingy. It'll get washed, probably bleached, uh, but it's a new order t-shirt. Um, and I can't imagine them not taking a new order t-shirt. It is just a printed tag. So it's very light. I paid less than a dollar for it. And the hope is I can get like at least like six bucks credit, seven bucks credit, depending on what they plan to sell it for, because they do give 50% credit. But I gotta be really careful because I don't want to grab stuff that they reject. I gotta make sure all the pieces are things that they would take. New order? I mean, come on, man. Next up, I have this really cool shirt. I don't think this is vintage, um, but the tag is interesting. I haven't seen this before, LNB Life. It does say it's made in the USA. It's got a paper tag underneath. I mean, maybe it is um, like a Y2K. I mean, it's got like kind of a vintage style, but then it's like this, um, you know, this purposely kind of speckled wear. Um, but really cool sleeves. I'll have to do some research, uh, but it's basically kind of like an interesting uh, baseball tee rodeo shirt. Look at how cute this is. I love it. But like I always say, always, always, always pick up anything rodeo. This is like a really thin material that wants to bunch up. Uh, no idea what I will sell that for, but I would imagine minimum $40, but I'll have to see like what exactly it actually is. It's not single stitch. It's got double stitch going on but I think it's a super cool shirt. Next up, now, for those of you who've been watching for a while, I know we've got a lot of new people that have come to the channel recently, thanks to our appearances with Ryan and Allie, Rally Roots, as well as Mikey Bags of Money, so welcome guys. Um, I have been picking up Anchor Blue jeans, 90s Anchor Blue jeans, specifically the baggy ones, the ones that actually say baggy, um, and those I've been able to sell a couple of pairs now on uh, Etsy for $89.99. Well, of course I wasn't going to pass up this hoodie, this vintage 90s anchor blue hoodie. It says anchor blue on the front, big anchor blue on the back. Now, I know that I've been able to sell the jeans, but does the brand have enough uh, recognition or fans that I'm going to be able to make some good money with a hoodie? I have no idea. And of course, it's a little bit heavy, so I probably paid a good four or five bucks for this. Um, so we'll see. It's pretty dirty. got to wash it. I don't know. I have no idea if there's any resale value in it at all. We're going to find out. Next up, this actually has the Goodwill tag on it. Uh, the date on it is August 19th. I don't feel like it was out. I don't know what their process is for sending stuff over to the bins. Um, this is a Liz Sport. So this is like a 90s sweater. It's super awesome. I'm going to go ahead and list this in the men's section. Um, I think it's, you know, with the size and everything. I don't know if Lizboard ever did men's stuff, but uh, I don't think, I mean, yeah, it's got purple on it, big deal. I think this could appeal to men as well. 
Um, and as I always say, women are always going to shop generally. They'll look in the men's section as well um, when it comes to vintage stuff like this. But hey, when you think of palm trees and tropical times, don't you think of a nice heavy sweater? I love it. I think it's awesome. Uh, I don't know why it didn't sell in the store. I mean, I wouldn't have paid $7.99 for it, but I probably would have paid four bucks and yet it still came to the bins. So I love that find. Next up, you guys, oh my goodness. You know, I haven't really been, I, I've been picking these kinds of things up lately. Um, not all of it's actually listed yet. This is absolutely ridiculous. This is vintage. I mean, this is part of the curse of going to the bins is stuff is so crazy cheap. You buy stuff that otherwise you probably wouldn't bother picking up. Uh, but this is amazing. Made in the USA. Uh, look at look at what is happening here. I don't even know. I think it's fantastic. It's in great condition. It's got some lace. It's got some flowers. It's absolutely ridiculous. But hopefully I can make at least 40 bucks on it. We'll see. All right, down to the last couple of items. Second to last thing for me. This, it's still a little damp. Oh, it's so gross and a little stinky. This needs to be washed ASAP, but this is amazing. I love it, not vintage. I'll give you guys a second for those of you who know what this is. This is a Christmas sweater. It is indeed, but it is a Krampus Christmas sweater. Uh, this is done by the company Middle of Beyond, M-O-B. You can go to their website. This actually, I think this one actually is still for sale there for $75. Uh, but I can still sell this particularly around the right time of year. I'll list this right away, but as it gets closer to Christmas, um, I can still get 60, 70 bucks for it. Uh, it's in great shape other than the fact that it's a little damp and it's a little stinky. It just needs to be washed. It's just, I think it's just cotton. So I'll just wash it gentle and probably, um, lay it out on a towel to dry and then finish it off with a little quick little fluffer in the, in the dryer. So it's not too crunchy. Um, but how beautiful is this? Krampus sweater. I love it. I love it. All right. My last thing that I show you of the stuff that I got for myself, I'm actually going to save for the very end because this is the piece that fulfills my challenge, at least for the first day of finding at least one thing that Vicky's going to be super jealous of. And let me tell you, she did indeed, when I sent her the picture, I only sent her a close up of it. I sent her the picture and she did indeed tell me she absolutely hates me now. She may never speak to me again. I don't know, but just wait a little longer. First, I'm going to show you, I think I have three pieces that I actually picked up for Vicky. And you guys are going to tell me in the comments, did I make a mistake? Did I choose well? Because man, when we're at the bins, I'll grab stuff all the time and take it over to Vicky and I'll show it to her. And sometimes she loves it and she takes it. And other times she's like, uh-uh, and throws it away, which, hey, I do the same thing when she gives me stuff. She's not always right. Sometimes she finds me cool stuff. And sometimes I'm like, what are you thinking? And that happens a lot when I find stuff for her. So I tried to pick stuff that I thought would be something that would be up her alley, but you guys are going to be the judge of that. This piece, I don't know. I could have made a big mistake and maybe she's going to tell me I'm stupid uh, and that this was a ridiculous thing to pick up. This, another one that has the date August 19th on it. It does have a goodwill tag on it. I got this because of the pattern and because it's so funky, right? Uh, well, I would say you're right. You haven't even seen it yet. This is, it's like this little crop top thing. Look at this material. Look at this pattern. It's like a crop top. Look at this. And then look at these sleeves. It's got these ridiculous multi-layered flared out sleeves going on here. And it's like this short little crop top. It zips up the back. It's got this funky little, little hand zip. I don't know what this brand is or if this was handmade by somebody um, it looks really well made. It's just super interesting. Uh, but it's like, what the heck is it? It zips up the back. So somebody who uh, this would fit, I think this could be super cute on somebody. It's just a really crazy pattern. Um, it feels very quality. It's like a, kind of a thicker material. So I don't know, guys. Did I mess up or did I do well? What do you think? It did have the tag, so it made it to Goodwill. But again, this tag is from the 19th. It didn't last very long in the store. I don't feel like it went through the full cycle. Uh, yeah, so tell me in the comments below, is this a hit or a miss? Hit or a miss? All right, so that's the first one. Next one. Now this is definitely, uh, was handmade. This looks like it would probably be good for uh, a teacher, and I know Vicki has picked up stuff before. 
um, that would be something that like a teacher like that teaches like elementary school kids uh, this would be a great thing or maybe somebody who works in a daycare um, this is actually it says D's designs handmade by D I think it's D Thompson so it's really cool because it actually has like the tag in it um, but it's this really colorful frog dress really colorful frog dress it does have pockets uh, it's got pockets it's got this cool little front it's got a, it's got a pocket on the top okay so it'd be great for putting your phone in and then it just this isn't another pocket it's just like this little thing that folds over there um, but what do you think again hit or miss hit or miss I got this for Vicki it ties has a tie in the back to tighten it but it's a full dress with this really cool funky frog pattern and again handmade by D Thompson I don't know this seems like a it would be a great a school dress for a teacher all right last thing for Vicki you tell me hit or miss hit or miss did I make a mistake do I need to get a new job and not be uh, Vicki's personal inventory shopper you tell me um, this is actually a, a vintage skirt now, I don't know the right keywords because Vicki's the one that knows these things. I don't pay attention uh, well enough to remember them. But I know one thing, the, the, the elastic is still really good, plus it has belt loops. So the elastic's not shot, so I did test for that. It's got a really cool pattern. It's kind of a longer, long skirt. So you guys can tell me in the comments what the style of this is. Now again, this isn't for me to sell. This is me uh, grabbing a few things for Vicki. I didn't want to um, pass things up that I was pretty sure she would want. All right, so the tag is My Michelle. And it's got a paper tag underneath. It's a nice size. It's a large, made in the USA. So what do you think? Hit or miss? What do you think of my three picks that I found for Vicky? I, I think this kind of makes up for the fact that she totally hates me for my last find. All right, guys, here we are. We're at the end. My goal this week, to go to the bins every day while Vicky's gone, so that's gonna be five days in a row. And every day that I go to the bins, try and find one item, one item to make Vicky super jealous that she didn't stay home with me, that she had to go off and go have fun without me and go live it up in Colorado with Liz and Kristen and all that jazz. I have to make her regret a little bit, okay? And today I think I succeeded, clearly I did, because I sent a picture of just the pattern on the fabric and that was enough for Vicki to use some very naughty words and then to tell me that she hates me and I think it's quite possible she'll never speak to me again. Let's see what I got. All right, now some of you are gonna look at this and be like, those are just some pajama pants. I mean, they're cool, they got a cool pattern and everything, but seriously, they're just some flannel pajama pants. Guys, and I know some of you know exactly what these are, especially uh, because Vicki had the full set like last year, a couple of years ago. These are vintage 90s Nick and Nora pajama pants. Now the reason these are special, um, these are always good to pick up to make some money on, but the reason these particular ones are special is uh, there's actually a picture of Kurt Cobain. I don't know if there's a picture of him in like the full suit, but at the very least in the pajama top um, with the same pattern, same color, same colorway, same pattern, everything. Kurt Cobain, the band Nirvana. And so the full set, depending on the time of year, the full set can sell for as much as like $500. I don't remember what Vicky sold hers for, but the full set can sell for as much as $500. If you look at the last 90 days, I think the full set sold for $300. Um, the top, generally, you can get at least a couple hundred for, and the pants, at least 100. I will probably list these for 200, but again, also depending on the time of year, um, these should be able to sell for minimum of 100, if not more, if it was like Christmas time, uh, they probably would sell for more. Uh, here's the thing. I saw this. I, gra I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I saw these. Grabbed them super fast. And then I was literally just about to leave. Grabbed them. And then I spent forever going so carefully through every single bin looking for the top that went with these. Could not find them. Then I saved for another rotation because I thought, okay, well, maybe it's possible that they ended up in a different bin and they're still back there. So I stayed for a whole other rotation. Still didn't find them. I was super, super bummed. 
but these are still gonna make me money. I did uh, hit up my, my bins buddy, Lace, and I, I showed that he didn't know about these particular um, pajamas. So I told him, and he's the one, he, he's there every day, and he always sells everything to Jesse. And I told him like what the deal was. I said, I'm looking for the top. I told him how much they, they sell for. And I said, if you do find the top and you wanna sell it to me, I will pay 50 bucks for it, but obviously you can sell it yourself. Um, if you want to make more money, but he doesn't generally, I don't think he sells anything online. I think he sells everything to Jesse. So, um, but seriously guys, Vicky was so mad, super, super mad, but day one, huge success up since four o'clock. I think it's like one o'clock now. I've wasted a lot of time today, but I'm going to go ahead and edit this video scheduled to come out tomorrow. When it comes out, it's going to be Friday. Uh, I'm going to do that. And then since, uh, I got no time limits on me, I'm probably going to stay up late do work till late, get lots of listings done. Um, it's the one little luxury of when I'm left home by myself. It's not a healthy way of doing things overall in the long run. Obviously, you should work normal hours, but every so often, once or twice a year, I get a few days in a row where I get to work dumb hours and get lots of extra stuff done. And so that is the plan. But thanks guys for sticking around. Like I said, give me any feedback down below. Tell me how I did with my one find. Tell me how I did with the stuff I picked up for Vicky. Tell me about what you would get at the gross out or if you have a gross out near you. Uh, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.